no matter how good our intentions the ways of cooperation all right now I want to use some words because you know we're a part of energy we're a part of a vibratory reality and when we think we project electromagnetic thought when we express when we may say words we're putting sound to go with that that thought that energy we're putting sound out in the vibratory reality and I think it's about the synchronization of sound it's the fine-tuning and this mining this industrial mining this industrial predator ruling class understands this mining process so we have been imprinted we have been imprinted with words that I think neutralize all right that neutralize the feeling that is being projected by the thought all right I want to go into this because this word gets I want to go into make to believe and to think you can't do both either we're going to believe or we're going to think and the difference is we project electromagnetic thought energy when we think so when we're thinking energy is flowing it's going where it goes it's flowing when we believe we've taken that flowing energy and put it into the box that is limited by the definitions of the belief so this is here's energy that should be going and finding its way into the universe so that we can create solutions being put into the box of belief and in every solution we attempt to come up is limited by the box of belief and you take this energy and you put it in that box of belief it reaches its frustration points it reaches its frustration points and then this and this manifest internally because we're in we're riddled with fears and doubts and insecurities so that these frustration points they turn into energy that we use against ourselves so I think we need to think about believing and thinking when I say I think I'm I'm projecting this thought I'm thinking when I say I believe I'm no longer thinking because I believe and I don't need to think am I making sense I'm not asking if you agree <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's thinking and believing. There's a distinction. Because every time, so it's almost like to me, you know, like incantations. You know, and some people ohm, and it's about the vibratory reality. See, so I think we have been on a mass manipulation of our of psychology. We're imprinted with certain words to we say them out of habit. I believe or I think. And I think if we say I think, we're doing something to the energy. We're doing something to not cooperate with them. It's an act of non-cooperation. Everything and the danger about believing, about belief, everything that ever happened as the civilizing process went through its motions. Number one, we are all the descendants of tribes. Every one of us is the descendant of a tribe. We are all children of the earth. At some point in the evolution of our, in our evolution, all right, every one of our ancestors met the machine, met the machine that exterminated the natives here, that enslaved the blacks. Every one of our ancestors met that machine, met that predator energy. The tribes of Europe met it. Everybody met it as it passed on through doing what it's doing. And it used violence, terror, and trauma, all right, to imprint into our consciousness to believe that their way was better. To believe because we refuse to believe in the beginning so they use this terror and this genocide and this trauma as a part of a mining process to get us to believe reality the way they wanted us to believe it so now we take this about believing we take this about believing every negative thing that we feel about ourselves every negative self-image that we have every fear that eats us that we have we we believe these things about ourselves and if we look at every one of these things every one of these things was imprinted into our consciousness by someone else we didn't think it up by ourselves so anyway that part because I look at everything as energy I looked at it because I come out of the 60s. So I, I'm a, anyway, I'm a child of the 60s. I'm, I'm old now. But 
But what I remember from the 60s, what I think is lacking in my generation is I think my generation, we're not telling the generations behind us the mistakes we made. We're not telling the generations behind us, hey, look, you know, it's almost like an apology for not, I mean, our intentions were good, our motives were good, and all of that was good, but it's almost like we owe an apology to the generation behind us because we didn't, because the beast is bigger than it was when we started out. So what happened? How did it remain the same? How did it absorb all of our energy? How did it absorb it and grow stronger off of what we were doing? It did it because we, it absorbed it and swallowed it because everything, basically everything we did was based, was based upon our good intentions and it was the way that our parents did it or, the, or their parents did it and it was the way that they did it and we went through the same motions and we're still going through the same motions and the beast continues to get bigger. And I find that fundamentally at it, to me, it's like we need to really slow down and think because in the 60s, we emotionally reacted to what we believed. We believed this was right. We believed that was right. And so they made token concessions and then they absorbed. Well, we got civil rights, but look, you know, look at, the, look at this community. Look at the, the economic devastation. All right, so we got civil rights and they still turn around and do what they do. Prisons are full of blacks, all right? Women are still struggling for theirs. You look at that poverty, so everything that we did, we just held, we just held some ground that being lost in your generation, and your generation has having to come up and fight this fight, so to speak. And I think it's because we didn't trust our intelligence enough to think clearly and coherently about what we were doing. I think that whatever's going on, we cooperated with them, even when we rebelled. So I'm looking at this thing about this cooperation. I think maybe, you know, and it's kind of something that it really needs to think about because every human being has to figure out what is their own idea of not to cooperate. But I'd say the first step to me is about, let's look at ourselves and recognize ourselves. This, this environmental, this better environment that we proclaim that we want. This spirituality that we proclaim that we represent. But then let's look at ourselves and recognize ourselves as human beings. Like thinking and believing. As a human being, it's our responsibility to recognize reality. Recognize the reality that we're in. Recognize rec reality. To recognize means that you look at a thing every way that it can be looked at until you see it and you recognize it. But or we can judge reality. And when we judge reality, once again, our ability to recognize is limited by the prejudices of our judgment. See, they put these concepts into our consciousness and we use them habitually. I believe this, we don't think. We're shutting off the, we're shutting off the switch. And judge, you can tell the way that the, judge and the judgment has taken place in this society and what's unfortunate about it is, see, everyone that judges, we judge ourselves the harshest. Where no one really sees, we judge ourselves the harshest. So I think we need, so I think these are concepts based upon us cooperating with them. And what I'm trying to find a way is where will we really true to start, truly start thinking as about a part of whatever it is we've got to do going into the future. We base it on non-cooperation. We understand, we take the time within our own individual consciousness to understand and look and recognize the ways that we cooperate even in our rebellion. If we beat ourselves up in our heads with, oh, I'm not good enough and there's something wrong with us, we're cooperating with them. I'm talking about non-cooperation at that basic, that basic, basic part of our own being a human being. And back to see because life has, we entered into this reality for whatever reason and we all went through whatever the trauma is that we all went through. And generally as a result of the trauma, depending on how early it happens, but generally as a result of trauma, the, the traumatized blame themselves that something was wrong with them because it even happened to them. And that's where that kind of judgment, see, that's that judgment. But if we recognize reality, no one ever asked to be traumatized, ever. 
No one asked to be traumatized.